Hey YouTube, we're back in the wood shop today. Um, got another project going on. Uh, we're building a livestock mineral feeder today. Um, so this design of this mineral feeder, um, I got this um, from the internet. Uh, there, there's even uh, retail uh, models available that are similar to, to what I'm going to build. You could go out and purchase yourself. Um, and so th there's lots, like say, there's a lot of it out there on, online of uh, people using things similar to, to the setup I have here on this mineral feeder. Um, but one thing I wasn't able to find out there in all those videos and information were dimensions um, for those feeders, you know, how, how long, how wide, um, et cetera, as well as, um, you know, a how to, how to build it to get, how, put, how to put it together, which it's fairly straightforward. It's not, um, you know, a very, a very tough build. Um, but in addition to those two things, one thing I was unable to find uh, very much information at all about was um, how big your feeder should be for the number of animals that you have. So essentially, uh, feet of bunk space for X number of animals. And so I went and researched, um, looked around, and, and couldn't, couldn't really fi figure out that number. Um, and so I'll back up just a little bit. Uh, the, the current mineral feeder that I have is a, a inverted semi-tire, you know, screwed down to a, a flat piece of, to a piece of plywood. And um, while I think I'm, I'm doing okay with that, um, I, when I put mineral out or when my, my goats come in from grazing and they come to that mineral feeder and I'm there, I'm there to witness it, um, it's a little bit too much of a frenzy. There's a little bit too much pushing and shoving going on. Uh, looks, you know, it's kind of a stressful situation, I think, for those goats. And it makes you question, is everybody really getting their fair share of mineral? You know, so this is something I think that is real. Um, you know, mineral program is really important. Um, you can find all kinds of experts to tell you how, how important it is and that you need to have mineral out and, and this, that, and the other. Um, but nobody really talks about the availability of it and, and what, what really is being available and what is not being available. And so to, to come around uh, to what we were talking about earlier, you know, the bunk space. So, you know, I researched on that. I, I couldn't really find anything that, that spoke to specifically number of animals per foot of bunk space. So what I did was I backed up and uh, I looked into feed troughs and water troughs, what, what the recommendation was for that. And so what I found was um, a little bit of consensus information. Um, Kansas State University, for example, um, I found an, an article where they referenced, um, look it up here real quick so I tell you right, but they had, they said for five to seven weights, so, so light, lighter weight cattle, you know, preconditioning type cattle, um, they're talking about 18 inches per head for a feed bunk. That's for a feed bunk, okay? And that's, you know, that's in a probably confinement type setting. You know, so that's, that's one reference point. Um, the same, same article spoke to finishing cattle, so fat cattle in a feed lot. And they're talking about 9 to 12 inches per head. You know, once again in a, a confinement situation, dry lot situation. Um, and this is for a feed bunk. All right, so for every animal, they're saying that, you know, if they're lightweight, you're needing 18 inches. Uh, for fat cattle, they're talking about 9 to 12 inches. So, okay. Um, another, another article I found, um, and this, was, this is Kansas State as well, we talk, they were talking about water troughs, okay? Um, so the information I found on water troughs, which is, is going to be a lot more similar to a mineral trough in my in my opinion, as far as um, the number of how that herd is going to go to that, that feeder. Um, a, a feed bunk in a confinement setting, they're all going to go to it at once. Everybody needs to be eating at the same time. So everybody has to have their bunk space specifically for them all the time. Whereas a water trough is going to be a little bit different situation. Um, the animals are going to probably come in in groups together uh, depending on the, the grazing situation, it'll be bigger or smaller groups. But generally, 
outside of, of some really, really big landscapes, um, those animals aren't going to come to the water trough 100% of the herd at once. And so what Kansas State was saying, um, in a more uh, set stock situation or a continuous grazing situation, so you know, they're, they're talking about big pastures um, where those animals are, are, are spread out, scattered out quite a bit. They're talking about uh, being able to have 15 inches per head uh, available to 10% of the herd to come to, to come to water. So 10% of your herd needs 15 inches uh, of bunk space. So if you have 100 head, um, a her if 100 head herd, 10% would be 10 head, 15 inches per head, that's 150 inches is what they're recommending. That's, that's the math on that, okay? But then they, they preface that in a rotational uh, grazing situation. So uh, smaller paddocks, cattle are, are more condensed, um, probably not going to all come to water at the same time. They're saying uh, 2 to 4 percent of the herd, the same 15 inches per head, but only for 2 to 4 percent of the herd, okay? So uh, uh, quite, a bit, quite a bit different than, uh, than the 10 percent. So those are the numbers that, that I was able to, you know, on a, on a fairly quick uh, internet research um, journey to come up with, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that the water trough numbers, you know, for, for probably a, a rotational um, grazing setup is probably what you're gonna see. You know, so maybe, it, you know, just call it 4% um, for your herd. So, you know, you got you to do the math on that. And the, and the 15 inches, you know, that's, that's a cattle number. You know, that's probably a, a mother cow number, all right? So if you're dealing with small ruminants like I am, goats or sheep, um, you're going to have to, to uh, do some different math on that. And I didn't, I never did, if I did, I missed it um, as far as um, space for a sheep or for a goat at that water trough. If they're talking about... 15 inches, you know, for a cow, um, you know, may, maybe three inches for a goat, maybe six inches for, for a goat, something like that, I, I guess would, would be um, comparable. Uh, but I don't, you know, that's like I say that, so it's, it's kind, of, kind of iffy on, on the numbers of trying to really find something legitimate to be like, this is what I need, black and white sort of deal. Anyhow, with all that said, uh, we've got an eight foot uh, feeder here with both sides being accessed. So we're talking about 16 foot of bunk space. All right, I'm roughly 320 head right now in my goat herd. Um, so the, the simple math there is that's 20 head for every foot of bunk space. So I don't know if that's, if that's too much or not enough right now, but uh, this is what we're gonna try out. We're gonna put it out there and I'm gonna see if the behavior on these animals changes any bit, any. Um, by keep, being able to keep more mineral out, um, hopefully I don't run out as often. Um, it's gonna be uh, covered up with this uh, piece of rubber. Um, I don't know if you can see it in the screen right now, but I'm gonna have a, have a sheet of rubber that'll lay over the top of it. It'll be screwed down uh, the, the middle of this, uh, this two by 10 right here and to shed off water. So. You know, I, don't ha I won't have to worry about uh, losing mineral to, to moisture and things like that. So hopefully be able to keep mineral out all the time, never run out. Um, so hopefully uh, create a situation where the these goats aren't um, coming to the trough in a frenzy. Um, so with all that said, I'll run through real quick here um, the materials I used and some of the dimensions um, from the starting from the bottom. Uh, the skids on this, um, this feeder are four by four uh, treated uh, lumber. So that, all that was was a, a 16 foot piece I cut in half and, and put runners on, on the bottom of it. Um, the, uh, the sides are two by sixes. The middle, the middle here is a two by ten, you know, stood on edge. I've got half inch uh, treated uh, plywood on the bottom. Uh, it's screwed up from the bottom in, into these, uh, these runners here. Uh, the end caps are, is a 2x10 uh, with a, it's cut to follow the slope from the 2x10 down to the 2x6. 
so that that rubber hopefully will kind of lay down and have some slope to it and shed that water. Um, like say, uh, just had some, some simple wood screws uh, for the plywood. Uh, the runners, I have, I have some of these uh, big uh, lag screws or maybe timber frame type screws. They're uh, five and a sixteenth by four inches. These are actually a little bit too long um, for uh, that four by uh, four in the bottom there. You can see it's got a real aggressive thread on it. Uh, it's got a really big head on it, which I like for this project. Um, really will, will hold everything together real well. But like I say, you probably could have done a three and a half or a three and a quarter inch uh, type screw on, on that um, for just having a four by four on the bottom of it. Um, I'm sure that the, the end of that screw is close to sticking out the bottom of this. Uh, additionally, I'm gonna, I've got some, some chain here and some, some uh, eyes that'll, that'll go into the, the front of this, this skid or this, on this runner and uh, be able to pull it with a four wheeler that way. And lastly, um, I got some, a piece of rubber belting there that uh, is gonna tack onto the middle of this. Um, probably has some big washers on top of that and it'll, it'll just hang out over the edges of, of this and the goats will be able to put their nose under it, push that flap up and get in and get their mineral and then back out and the flap will kind of close back down, keep all the moisture, moisture off the, this mineral. Enough of my rambling. Um, we'll show you some footage here of putting this thing together and then uh, we'll talk to you on the next video. Thanks, have a great day.